terms of storytelling. The story revolves around the Abbott family, played by Emily Blunt as Evelyn Abbott, John Krasinski as Lee Abbott, Millicent Simmons as Regan Abbott, Noah Duke as Marcus Abbott, and, and Cillian Murphy also stars in the second installment. The Abbott family finds itself in an apocalyptic world after the Earth is infested with aliens kill anything that makes a sound. As much as it's a story about aliens and monsters, it is also an ode and tribute to the complex interpersonal relationships that family members share when faced with a challenge. And, in this case, the challenge was life-threatening. The first film begins on the 89th day, and there's no beating around the bush to explore unnecessary and obvious subjects like what happened to the world or how governments reacted to the situation, but because of this, we don't get to know about the origin of the prime antagonists of the films. Having said that, Krasinski did think about the monster's origin, etc. In this video, we will explore the 2018 film A Quiet Place, the 2021 film A Quiet Place 2, and dive deep into the monsters of the franchise known as Death Angels. We will also explore all aspects of the Death Angels, including their reproductive system and origin. So let's cut to the chase, shall we? Before we go into our list, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click from you, but it means a lot to us. Thank you. Let's begin. Day one. Lee Abbott arrives at a park to watch his son's baseball game where his family is already present. We are next introduced to Lee's wife, Evelyn, and their children, Marcus, Bo, and Reagan, who's dead. It seems like a typical and fun day for everyone with Lee and Evelyn's neighbor, Emmett, also present in the crowd who seemed eager to learn a thing or two about sign language. However, things soon took a turn to the left when an unidentified extraterrestrial object hurled into the Earth's atmosphere and crashed nearby. Chaos broke out, and Evelyn took Marcus and Bo, while Lee took Reagan in their respective cars. Suddenly, the town and its people are under attack by the alien creatures. After much struggle, the Abbott family managed to escape the scene. Day 89. In less than three months, most people lost their lives to these blind aliens with hypersensitive hearing abilities and nearly impenetrable armored bodies. The Abbott family has learned to live with the situation at hand by communicating in the American Sign Language. While scavenging for supplies, they reach a store where Lee gets items to boost the radio signals, while Bo takes a toy shuttle with Reagan's help, unbeknownst to Lee. While crossing a bridge, Bo puts in the batteries that he retrieved on his own and to everyone's horror, the toy starts making noises. Lee rushed towards Bo to save him, but the effort proved to be little too late as one of the Death Angels got Bo. Day 472. More than a year later, the Abbott family has managed to survive and Lee has been making notes on the strengths and weaknesses of the Death Angels. He is also trying to get help by sending SOS messages in Morse code through the radio. Furthermore, Evelyn is pregnant with another child and would soon go into labor, but the pregnancy is going to be way tougher than usual because she cannot make an iota of noise when the child arrives in this strange and dangerous world. That night, a major tragedy was averted when Marcus accidentally knocked over an oil lamp but Lee quickly contained the fire. Later, Evelyn and Lee danced to Neil Young's Harvest Moon. It's nice to see how the family has managed to keep their sanity and love intact in these difficult times. Day 473. The next day, Lee gives Reagan a cochlear implant that he had been working on, but it doesn't work. He later takes Marcus fishing, where he tells Marcus that it's okay to talk loudly as the loud background noises, such as from the waterfalls, overshadow the sound of their voice. Marcus tells Lee that Reagan blames herself for Bo's death, and she believes that Lee blames her too. Meanwhile, Evelyn goes into labor before her due date and makes her way to the basement, but steps on the exposed nail, because of which 
that she drops a frame and the sound attracts nearby creatures. She turns the red lights on, which was a sign of imminent danger. Marcus and Lee see the light and rush. Lee asks Marcus to set off the fireworks to create a diversion. Lee arrives to find his newborn child with Evelyn in the improvised soundproof basement. He then goes to find Marcus and Reagan, who are atop a grain silo. Meanwhile, the basement gets flooded with a death angel, Evelyn and the infant inside. After Marcus falls inside the silo, Regan tries to help but nearly sinks into the grain herself, which acted like quicksand. The death angel stalking Evelyn now came toward the siblings, but Regan's cochlear implant let out high-frequency sounds that repelled the death angel and helped Lee reunite with his children. However, Lee sacrifices himself to save his children. Regan realized by now that high-frequency sounds were excruciatingly painful to the death angels, forcing them to expose their softer insides. And with this newfound knowledge, Regan and Evelyn begin taking down the Death Angels one monster at a time. Day 474. With their home destroyed, Marcus, Regan, and Evelyn head out to find other survivors. They enter a fenced-off place where Evelyn unwittingly set off a sound alarm that alerted the Death Angels. They ran for their lives, but Marcus stepped into a bear trap and severely hurt his leg. His screams attracted a Death Angel. Evelyn and Regan managed to slay the creature that ran towards the abandoned building after freeing Marcus from the bear trap. There they find their old neighbor Emmett, who takes them to his soundproof home. Out. Emmett had recently lost his family. Citing the lack of resources, he tells the abbots they cannot stay for long. However, he allows them to stay the night, seeing Marcus's condition and the newborn baby. Upon hearing the songs Beyond the Sea on radio, Reagan theorizes it was a hint for a safe haven on a nearby island. She wishes to reach the island and use its radio tower to amplify and broadcast her cochlear device's frequency so that other survivors could weaponize it. Despite Marcus's apprehensions, she ventures alone at night to find the island. Day 475. Upon learning about this, Evelyn convinces Emmett to find her daughter and he obliges. He saves Regan from a death angel. Regan then manages to persuade Emmett to accompany her on her mission. Meanwhile, Evelyn learns that her baby's oxygen cylinder was running out, so she leaves the baby in Marcus's care and goes out to find an oxygen cylinder and other medical supplies. Marcus accidentally finds Emmett's wife's corpse and gets startled, alerting the creatures in the vicinity. To save himself, he runs to Emmett's makeshift airtight compartment and inadvertently locks himself inside with the baby. On the other hand, Emmett and Reagan get attacked by, by feral humans who had lost every ounce of humanity. However, Emmett managed to get them killed by making noises to attract the creatures. Amidst the chaos, one of the creatures got atop a boat that started to drift with the current. Reagan and Emmett reach the island on another boat, where they find out that the survivors have been living a normal and happy life. Meanwhile, Evelyn returned from her scavenging trip, killed one of the death angels, and saved her children from dying of suffocation, yet she had to hide in the bunker with her children because a death angel was prowling outside. Day 476. On the island, Emmett and Regan are welcomed. Emmett later discovers that the death angel that had drifted on the boat had reached this very island. It started to wreak its havoc on the island's survivors, and Emmett, Regan, and the leader of the survivors head out to the radio station. Regan manages to transmit the high frequency through the speakers and incapacitates the death angel. She later kills it when the creature exposes the softer insides of its head. The signal was now being broadcast to be used by others as a weapon. Marcus used it against the death angel that was prowling near the abbots and shot the creature to death. Quiet Place Monsters, Death Angels the carnage carried out by the Death Angels on Earth is nothing short of a massacre and unimaginably gruesome bloodshed by a pack of wolves in a daycare. Things would happen so fast that one would have no time to figure out what was really happened or how to deal with the situation. It's like you either survive or you don't, and luckily the Abbott family managed to survive. This is in sharp contrast to other alien invasion films, where the aliens invade, the political leaders make speeches, and the people are left to decide how to survive the massacre. A quiet places death angels on the other hand are vicious animalistic creatures who live to hunt and well if they hear you they'll hunt you <laughs> 
deaf angels have a highly evolved sense of hearing and can probably sense other forms of vibration too. They also make use of echolocation like bats, and with its help they pinpoint the exact location of their prey. These are malevolent, non-sapient creatures with limited intelligence but an acute instinct to kill. The film's whiteboard also suggests that they are capable of hunting in packs. Furthermore, when one dies, another comes running to take its dead mate's place. The death angels are vaguely humanoid creatures with four limbs. They somewhat look like a cross between a bat without wings and a thin gorilla. Their overall body, however, is lean and bony, which aids agility. The creatures are essentially quadrupedal because their forelimbs are disproportionately longer than their rear limbs. They have digitigrade limbs and walk on their knuckles, but the limbs end in sharp claws that are capable of not just killing humans and their unfortunate animals, but also give the death angels the ability to rip through hard metal. With such efficient and evolved physiology, especially that of their limbs, they can climb walls and leap or jump to long distances. Its entire body is covered in tough, chitinous plates that render it practically immune to most forms of incoming damage, including multiple shots of bullets. The head of a death angel is unique in many ways. Firstly, they have an array of razor-sharp teeth, signaling the fact that they are essentially carnivorous beings. But interestingly, they are not known to eat their prey. And it's probably the most frustrating fact about the death angels. The creatures are clearly not intelligent enough to hunt for the fun of it, or sadism. It seems that they are designed in such a way that these apex predators hunt on being driven by instincts. A reason why they do not eat their prey is that their biology and food habits might not be compatible with animals of Earth. But then, when they can defy all odds to cover a journey from another solar system that could take hundreds of years, they are robust and durable enough to sustain starvation before finally succumbing to it. The head has no nose, so they either don't have a sense of smell or, even if they do, smelling is carried out by another organ such as their tongues. But they definitely lack eyes, which renders them blind. They counter this disability with a super-evolved and heightened auditory sense. Their head is covered in plated armor that they voluntarily remove to listen more closely to incoming sonic vibrations. When these plates of armor are unfolded, the head of a death angel resembles a cabbage from Satan's plate and, in a way, the Demogorgon from Stranger Things. Their extremely wicked sense of hearing is both their friend and foe. Their inner ears are so delicate and perceptible to sound waves that any high-frequency sound wave holds the power to cause them excruciating levels of pain and disorientation. Reagan's cochlear implant made the death angels squeal in pain and gave them the human equivalent of spasms. When in this condition, they invariably expose their soft and vulnerable inner portions that that are not protected by any tough armor. At the climax of the last scene of A Quiet Place 2, Regan hits the Death Angel with a child's force. It was not a hefty blow, but still managed to slay the sound-reliant predator. Naturally, we conclude that the softer insides are vulnerable to conventional weapons, even rods. <laughs> Another weakness that they have is the fact that they cannot swim, which limits them to being essentially terrestrial creatures. However, this fact is engulfed in controversy and confusion because the two films show different views on their swimming ability. In the first film, we have seen a death angel stalking Evelyn in a flooded basement, but the second film explicitly details the fact that they drown in water. We at Marvel Videos think that although they cannot swim, they can survive a flooded basement, much like a human who cannot swim would do. It's not so complicated after all. Also, they don't have the ability to fly, so if you can manage to reach a remote place or island by means of water or air, you can survive the death angel infestation. Origin of Death Angels. The first movie largely left the questions about the origin of these monsters unanswered and only dropped hints that the creatures were of extraterrestrial origin. The second film confirmed this fact in the opening scene, which was a flashback to day one of the apocalypse. In the scene, Lee goes to a departmental store to pick up a few items, and the television was playing news from Shanghai where a meteorite had crashed. Soon, another meteorite crashed in New England. Aliens from the meteorite 
meteorites started to massacre anything that made a sound. The curious appearance of the monsters from the franchise fails to tell us much about their lineage or type of species. Yet, the one thing that is clear is that they hail from the planet that's devoid of light and hence their evolutionary process didn't need them to develop eyes or vision. Now, since the planet does have light or a star's rays reaching it, the planet must inherently be frigid, which supports the fact that they have extremely tough and durable exoskeletons that were probably in place to save them from the icy temperatures. Furthermore, the planet lacks water or any other liquid, which is implied from the fact that they drown in water, lacking swimming abilities. At the same point in time, their planet was destroyed because of unknown causes and the remnants of the planet turned into meteorites that struck the earth with death angels aboard the extraterrestrial rocks. One may argue that the heat caused due to the friction of the rocks against the atmosphere must logically burn them alive but this is a semi-truth argument as the exoskeletons of the death angels insulated them from the heat just as it probably insulated them from the cold temperatures of the planet. As you would already know there were no signs of aliens in the vicinity of our solar system and the closest system is that of the Alpha Centauri, which is 4.37 light years away from Earth. To give you a better perspective of things, at the speed of an average meteor which travels at about 72 kilometers per second, it would take the meteor 18,208 years to travel from Alpha Centauri to Earth. Logically, these beings have traveled a long way and have taken quite a bit of time to reach Earth because no asteroid or meteorite travels at the speed of light. So, it is possible that these creatures probably covered the journey in some sort of a hibernation state, right from wherever it is that they started. However, looking at the speed and agility that they possess, it is obvious that they require a great deal of energy to move around. And obviously, they are bound to eat at some point. They cannot rely on consuming their bodily resources forever. Thankfully, there's a featurette on A Quiet Place that shows that the digital design of the Death Angels was much beefier and muscular than the one portrayed in the films. Their leaner outlook in the movie could be the result of the long hibernation that they were in while traveling to Earth, and it only got more pronounced because of their stay on Earth without food. This brings us to our next entry, which is their reproductive process. How do the Death Angels reproduce? Although the Death Angels cannot fly, they are essentially based on bats because the two organisms share quite a few traits like echolocation, climbing, and their physical appearance. It would be safe to assume that the Death Angels have a similar reproductive system to that of the bats. Then again, different kinds of bats have different gestation periods depending on their diet. While some bats go into labor in just six weeks, the others take nine. The length of the gestation period depends on several factors, including the availability of food. Naturally, if the death angels were not eating anything, then they were not really reproducing either because organisms don't copulate when they are hungry or stressed. However, let's say that they were eating something off screen and were in fact reproducing, then how were they doing that? Well, there's no definitive answer to this question, but by looking at their semi-humanoid physiology, it can be speculated that they may have a reproductive style like humans, albeit more animalistic. However, the film doesn't detail anything about the genders of the Death Angels, let alone anything else. So they may be hemophroditic, having both male and female sexual organs, or may even follow a colony system, with a queen death angel reproducing all others. If we are to believe that the species consists of males, consists of males and and females, they might find their possible mates through specific vibrations, and perhaps copulation could take place by opening up one of their several armor plates. Similarly, they might go into labor by opening a piece of their armor, or it could happen through their mouths. But given their physiology, it is quite improbable that they lay eggs. Again, this is mere speculation, since the film likes to keep things shrouded in mystery, and the characters have little idea about the real nature of the Death Angels, nothing is certain. Naturally, we have to wait for the third installment if at all it would see the light of day. If we are to believe Emily Blunt, then A Quiet Place 2 was the second chapter of a trilogy.
things you may have missed while watching A Quiet Place. Both films of the franchise are engaging and build such levels of tension that it gets difficult for the viewers to focus on the little details that the film intelligently throws at them. Most of the action of the first film takes place on day 473, and while the film doesn't add a useless fat while building its story around how most of the Earthlings were annihilated, it does provide glimpses of the aftermath of the alien invasion. For instance, newspaper clippings and a few notes on the whiteboard show the timeline. The opening scene shows a headline from the New York Post that read its sound. Then, there are several missing person posters scattered here and there throughout the film. In one such scene, we see that New York has gone into a lockdown after the invasion. Furthermore, the red lights in the film had a special significance apart from serving as a beacon for danger. They emit a high-pitched sound that distracted the creatures. At the supermarket, certain food products like chips were left untouched because they make a lot of noise while being eaten. The Abbots extended this habit to their dinner table as well. And eight only things that are non-crunchy. be a quiet place three according to the latest news there will be a third film to the franchise which is set for release in the first quarter of 2023 however it is believed that it will be a spin-off instead of a direct requel apart from this there's no new information regarding the film but we will definitely post it on our website marvelousvideos.com as soon as we get new information you can check out our website for more interesting stuff we'll leave a link in our description before we go into our list we have a very small request if you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click from you, but it means a lot to us. Thank you. Let's begin. <laughs>